hi guys you welcome back to my channel today I'll be showing you how to draft a pant but the pant we'll be drafting today is known as the jeans foundation which is more close fitted okay and just in case you do not know we have four basic pant foundation which are the culotte the trouser the slack and the jeans okay so today we'll be drafting the jean foundation kind of pant from the top line which is my waistline i'm going to measure down my waist to floor measurement which is 42 inches and square out our horizontal line which i already did now from the top line i'm going to measure down my waist to ankle measurement of 40 inches and square out our horizontal line this line is my ankle line now from the top line i'm going to measure down my crotch depth which is 11 inches and then i'm going to square our horizontal line right across this point so this horizontal line becomes my crotch line okay now i'm going to divide the distance from my waist to my crotch line which is 11 inches into three equal parts so whatever that gives me i'm going to measure upward from the crotch line and mark a point and then square our horizontal line right across this point this line becomes my hip line now from the top line i'm going to measure down my waist to knee line which is 24 inches and then square our horizontal line right across this point this line is my knee line now i'm going to take you through these lines the top line is my waistline second line hip line third line crotch line foot line knee line fifth line ankle line and the bottom line is my bottom line and i also added one and a half inches for my m allowance working on the front part of the pant from the side seam on the crotch line i'm going to mark my front hip measurement which is nine and three quarter inches and do the same on the waist line now i'm going to connect both points with a straight line now on the crotch line i'm going to come out from this vertical line and mark two inches now i'm going to come out from this point diagonally and mark one and quarter inches next i'm going to take the length of this vertical line and mark the midpoint and then come upward from the midpoint with half of an inch take note of this point next we're going to move to the waistline from the vertical line you're going to come in with half of an inch and mark a point so this half of an inch is basic if you're going to have a front dart on your pant but because I'm not going to be having a front dart, so instead of coming in with half of an inch, I'm going to come in with three quarter of an inch and mark a point. Now using a ruler, I'm going to connect the point on the vertical line to the point on the waist line. Next, I'm going to take my curve ruler and blend through the point I marked on the crotch, draw a curve line smoothly to blend into the line we've drawn before so just make sure you get a smooth curve when doing this okay next to draw the side seam i'm going to measure from this point on the waistline and mark my front waist width which is seven and three quarter Okay, now I'm going to connect this point on the waistline to the hip like so. Next, from the side seam on the crotch line, I'm going to mark in half of an inch. Then I'm going to connect with my curve ruler to the hip line like so. Okay, now I'm going to take the total width from this point to this point and then mark the midpoint now i'm going to square a line down from this point to the bottom of my pant just make sure it's on a 90 degree angle 
Now, on both sides of the vertical line on the bottom of the pants, I'm going to mark three and a half inches. On both sides of the vertical line on the knee line, I'm going to mark four inches. On both sides of the vertical line on the crotch line, I'm going to mark four inches. Next, I'm going to connect from the knee, the point on the knee to the point on the bottom of the pants using a straight line like so. Next, I'm going to use a colored pen to draw a guideline from the point on the crotch line to the knee line like so. I'm going to take my curve ruler, this is my pants curve, and draw a smooth curve blending to the knee line from the crotch like so. So just make sure you have a smooth transition when you're doing this. Next, I'm going to position my pants curve like so and draw a curve line from the crotch line blending into the knee line like so. Next, to finish off the pants, I'm going to extend the crease line, which is the vertical line on the middle of the pants. I'm going to extend this to the waistline like so. Now, if you want a dart on the front part of your pants, at this point, you're going to mark your dart length on this line and mark your dart width on both sides of this vertical line, okay? Now, another thing you can do to the waistline is to come upward quarter of an inch from this point and draw a curved line that blends into the waistline. Or you can decide to leave the waistline straight if you want. And right now we're done with drafting the front of the pants. Let's move over to the back. On the crotch line from the side seam, I'm going to mark my back hip measurement, which is 10 and 3 quarter inches. I'll do the same thing on the hip line and also on the waistline. Now I'm going to connect this point together with a straight line like so. Now because the back pant is going to have a dart, I am going to take the measurement from the vertical line that is on the waistline to side seam and then mark the midpoint. Now from this midpoint I'm going to square down a line that is three and a half inches to four inches long, okay? Now to get the crotch extension for the back, I'm going to divide my back hip measurement, which is 10 and 3 quarter inches, into four equal parts, okay? Now I'm going to extend from the vertical line with this figure. So whatever I get, I'm going to be extending the crotch line with that amount. Okay, now I'm going to mark the midpoint of this vertical line which is 11 inches, so that will give me five and a half inches. Now, I'm going to come in from the vertical line on the waistline with two inches. Basically, you are supposed to come in from this point with one and three quarter inches, but using two inches works for me, okay? So I'm going to be doing two inches. Now, from this point, I'm going to come out diagonally with one and three quarter inches and mark a point. Now I'm going to come upward from this point on the waistline one inch and then draw a one inch line upward. Now I'm going to connect these two points with a straight line like so. And then using my curve ruler, I'm going to draw a smooth curve right through these four points like so. And I would advise, as I said previously, do whatever it takes to get a smooth curve right along this point. Even if it means that you're going to divide from the point on the um, vertical line a little bit, just do whatever it takes to get a smooth line. Okay? All right. Now that we're done, I'm going to take from this point and insert my back waist measurement plus my dart allowance. My back waist measurement is six and three quarter inches. I'm going to be adding three quarter inches to that measurement and then I can draw my waistline for the back like so. 
Now I'm going to extend the dart line upward to meet the new waistline. Now on both parts of this dart line, I'm going to mark my dart width of three quarter inches. So that means on both sides of the vertical line, I'll be marking three eighths of an inch. Now the length of my dart from the new waistline is going to be four and a half inches. Okay, now I'm just going to connect this point together. Now on the crotch line, on the side seam, I'm going to go in with half of an inch. Now I'm going to take the total width from the crotch extension to this point on the crotch at the side seam and then mark the midpoint. Now I'm going to draw a straight line from this point to the bottom of the pants, just like we did on the front of the pants. Now I'm going to connect from the side seam of the waist to the hip and then to the crotch like so. Now on the bottom of the pants, I'm going to mark four inches on both sides of the vertical line. Remember on the front, we mark three and a half inches. Now for the knee line, and I'm going to mark four and a half inches. Now I'm going to connect the point from the knee line to the point on the bottom of the pants like so. Now I'm going to mark four and a half inches on both sides of the vertical line on the crotch line and using a colored pen to draw a temporary um, guideline from this point on the crotch line to the knee line like so. Okay, so now I'm going to take my pants curve and just draw a curve from this point on the crotch to blend into the knee line. Okay, and I'll do the same at the side of the pant. And after doing this, you can notice on the knee that the line is in smooth. So I'm going to erase that and redraw my lines just to make sure I have a smooth transition from the crotch to the knee of the back pants. Now that we're done with drafting the pattern, the next thing is to properly fit the pant. And to do this, I'm going to bring in my front pattern. Next, I'm going to take the measurement from the crotch to side seam on the crotch line and do the same thing for the front. Now we're going to combine this measurement together. So the measurements we're aiming at should be your upper thigh measurement. My upper thigh is 22 and a half. And then you should be adding one and a half inches to your upper thigh measurement. That is if you want a contour fit. But if you want a relaxed fit, something that is not too tight, then you should add two and a half inches to your upper thigh measurement. Okay, so after taking this measurement, I got 24 and quarter inches. So for now, I'm just going to leave this like so because I reckon that it will not be too loose. Okay, but let's say I need to take out that quarter of an inch because I'm aiming for 24 inches instead of 24 and a quarter inches. So what I'm going to do in this case is from this point, on the crotch I'm going to come in with quarter of an inch so I would advise that if you're going to do this step just to make sure you have your accurate measurement on the crotch level then I would say you draft your front pattern first and then when you draft them the back pattern you take the crotch level measurements of both the front and the back pattern before drawing the leg line of the back pattern so because right now, let's say I need to remove the quarter of an inch. That means I need to move in the crease line of the back pattern. So it is better you take the crotch level measurement first of both the front and the back pattern before you start inserting your knee measurement and your bottom measurement of the back pants. Okay. One more thing we need to do is to take our crotch length measurement. That is this measurement I'm demonstrating on the side. So you have to compare the crotch 
length measurement of both the front and the back pattern. And if there is a shortage, then you need to do this step right now. To do this, on the center back, slash through the hip line to side seam, but don't cut through all the way out of the hip line. Then you're going to open up this with the amount of shortage you add when you took your um, crutch length measurement. So the shortage I have is about one inch. So I'm going to slip a piece of paper right through this point and then open up one inch at the center back like so. So right now I'm going to carefully tape these in place making sure that I only have one inch opening. Okay? And after doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and redraw the center back line like so. So let's say you have more than your crutch length measurement. What you need to do is to do the reverse by overlapping with the amount that you need to take out of the crutch length. Okay? To alter the leg line of the pants, let's say we're going for a suit trouser that is a bit flayed at the bottom of the pant. I'm going to come out of both sides of the bottom of the pant with um, one to one and a half inches. For a suit pant, I would advise you come out one and a half inches on both sides of the bottom of the pant. Now I'm going to come upward from the knee line three inches on both sides. Now I'm going to connect the point above the knee line to the point on the bottom of the pant and do the same for the other side. Take for instance, you want something wider at the bottom. Um, I would say instead of coming out with one and half inches, you can come out with three and a half inches like I did on this trouser I'm wearing right now. So after you've done this, repeat the same process for the back and yeah, we're done. For a pencil leg line, you would need to taper in the bottom of the pants with either half of an inch or quarter of an inch or even more and do the same thing at the knee level of the pants. Okay? Now we've come to the end of this tutorial. Before you cut out your pattern, make sure you add your M allowance and fold that in and also add in your seam allowance. Then go ahead and cut the pattern. Then when it comes to the waistline, make sure you through the waistline by folding the dart first and then go back in and redraw the waistline before you cut this out okay and yeah we've come to the end of this tutorial i do hope you find this tutorial helpful if you do remember to leave a comment and like this video and also subscribe to my channel and yeah i'll see you next time bye bye